these are the three things that are like your pillars. This is the tripod that is gonna hold up the camera. And if one of these legs is not there, your camera is gonna fall down and break. No, I'm kidding. It's something that I didn't understand for a really long time, even though I'd taken a lot of voice lessons on all of that. And once I started to understand this system, it really helped me to be able to get more out of my voice lessons and also be able to think more for myself when my voice wasn't working, what part of the system wasn't working so that I could help correct that for myself. So let's jump in. Okay, so we have these three essentials to, to the voice that all have to work together. It's this whole system and it's basically the breath, which is your respirator, your vibrator, which is the vocal cords, which live right in here in the, in the voice box or the larynx. And they are what vibrate and make the sound, which then comes out and gets filtered from the vocal cords all the way out here is the vocal tract. And that is what is gonna filter that sound. And it's what makes your voice sound unique. We, none of us have the exact same shaped filter and that's why someone's voice sounds one way and yours sounds another. So I love this, this analogy that um, a teacher gave me once, Guy Babasek, he was one of my first mentors and he gave me this car analogy, which is basically like the breath is the gas and we need gas for the motor to run, which is where we are getting this vibration, the engine. And then the vocal tract is like the type of car that you were born with, okay? So um, why is this important? It's important because if it, it's not a linear system, okay? They used to think that it was, but we realize now that all of this feeds back on itself, okay? So if one part of this system isn't working properly, it affects all the other parts. And that's why I want you to understand how it works so that basically you can figure out how to fix your own car, thus your own voice, okay? So basically we are gonna start with, we have the breath, okay? The breath. It's, we have airflow, we need the right amount of breath, which is gonna come up and it is going to overcome the closing of the vocal folds so that they will start to vibrate, okay? So once it overcomes that resistance, those air mo molecules are bouncing around and that's what creates the sound wave, okay? So we have this sound wave that needs to be optimized so that it can be easily filtered by the vocal tract, okay? So what happens in the sound wave? Basically, it's not a sine wave, which would be like, Burr. what do you hear? It's a stack of different pitches that our ears basically blend and we hear it as one pitch, but it's basically a bunch of different sound wave waves stacked on top of each other, which are also called harmonics. But we want that sound wave to be really nicely built and nicely stacked so that it can be filtered properly. So the air is gonna come up and then we want this to work really well so that we get this nice sound wave that can be filtered. If there's not enough high end in the sound wave, you're gonna get kind of a dull sound, like, uh, cause you're gonna miss all those high end sounds in the sound wave. But if there's not enough low end, it's gonna sound more shrill and we don't want that either. So then it comes out and it's gonna get nicely filtered through this through your vocal tract, okay? And that is almost like, we can, you can think of that almost like if you have ever played with an old stereo, because I know none of us listen to music on stereos anymore, but there are these knobs where you can adjust the EQ, right? So this is sort of like having an EQ for your voice. And depending on how we shape the vowels, which are the most important part of that of, of they're basically the primary way that we control the filtering of the of the sound wave. It's like using an EQ system, okay? So all of this feeds back on itself, okay? So if you are getting a really nice sound wave and it's getting out here and it's filtering in here and it's it's you get that nice pingy sound that you get when you can you can tell your voice is feeling really ringy and good so that sound wave starts to actually it doesn't just come straight out it actually starts to feed back on itself um, and and what happens is that energy comes back down and in the vocal folds you have the some of the sound the energy is already trying to get out and it creates 
Here's another analogy for you. Like if you're thinking of a subway doors and you have all these people trying to get out of the subway, which is like the air molecules trying to get out and that sound wave trying to get out. Um, and you have people coming and they're trying to get into the subway. So those doors are getting kind of pushed apart because you have people trying to get out and people trying to get in. So that's basically like your vocal folds start to get pushed apart again and you get this energy that is um, holding the vocal folds apart. Well, then once some of that, those, that energy gets out, then you have this void in it. We have this elastic energy that pulls the vocal folds closed in this really optimal way. And it's, it's done with this acoustic energy. It's not done with you muscling it together. In fact, if you try to muscle it together, then that's when you start to get that strain and that squeeze. And, um, we want to use the acoustic energy to get that strength and that nice sound, strong sound wave. We want that feeling of having that back pressure come back. Um, and that's what using straws can give us. So, but anyway, once we get that sound wave coming out and it's all pinging, then um, everything is working together as one big system. Um, if, if any part of that system isn't working well, like if you're, get, if you're sending too much air, then the vocal folds can't come together all the way and then you get a breathy sound and then that doesn't really give a nice sound wave to be filtered. Or if you're sending not enough air, you're getting possibly a squeeze in the vocal folds and um, that's not creating a, a good sound wave either. Or the problem can be here in the filter and you're not filter, you're not forming your vowels in, an, in a nice optimal way, which is then not sending back good energy to the vocal folds and then that's maybe you know those vowels are also going to affect how much air is coming through so it's all interdependent on each other we as teachers are listening for what part of that system is not working and then we can isolate it and that's why we have you know you can work on each of these systems separately you can work on you can do breathing exercises even if you want to even just do like a a hiss or a and, and start to get uh, used to that feeling of even airflow and even air pressure. And then a great way to work on and isolate just this source of sound, this phonation, are the straw exercises. That straw is going to actually create, it's gonna lengthen the vocal tract and it's gonna close it down. So you automatically start to get that back pressure. So you can actually train the vocal folds to start to come together optimally and square up by using a straw. And we're gonna get way more into that next week, but it's a great way to train your vocal folds to, so they know exactly what to do without using muscle, extra muscle. And then the vowels, that's something that are, that's something you can work on with isolating that with exercises and getting used to what a pure vowel sounds like. You know, you might think you're doing an uh, but it's really an ah, uh, and, you're, and you're getting this really wide sound and you can't figure it out. So work listening and, and recording yourself. All of these three parts of your system have to work together. The breath, the chords, and this resonance all have to be working together, which gives us a feeling of stability when we're singing or that feeling of balance where it doesn't feel like things are getting out of control. Next week, we are going to be meeting with Mindy Pack. She is going to help us with the straws. Honestly, if you are a speaker, I highly recommend getting some straws. Um, my favorites to this point are Mindy's because they come in different sizes and different lengths and diff and, and, and what you, the size that you need also depends on where your voice is at that day. It's not going to be the same all the time. It depends on how much water you have drank or sleep you've gotten. If you've been ill, whether you've been menstruating or all of that is going to have an effect on how big of a straw you need or the length of the straw. And, and you immediately feel the effects. It's, I've never felt anything improve my voice so quickly than doing straw work. I highly recommend learning how to do some straw work. So we're gonna dig, it, dig into straw work next week with Mindy. I'm super excited about that. And then I'm gonna start breaking up some of these concepts. We'll, we'll break these into smaller 
pieces so that they're really easy to digest. So um, thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, men can totally use the same te techniques. Absolutely. Um, do you, are you guys um, using your speaking voices a lot since we are in this uh, pandemic and we are on uh, Zoom all the time and Skype all the time? Is anyone having their, t uh, I mean, I feel like I'm on Zoom all the time and I, I definitely have to remind myself not to speak too loudly because I think that they can't hear me and then I find my voice really tired. But I will say that I use the straws in the morning and then again after uh, after I've spoken all day or sung a lot just to reset my voice and find that nice balance. But next week with Mindy Pack, it's going to be Thursday at 10.30 Pacific Daylight Time. So join in, she is awesome. She coaches everybody, like Justin Timberlake, Brandi Carlisle, um, she's just out there with touring artists. And I'm telling you, all these touring artists do straw work. We are going to dig into that next week with Mindy. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. This was super fun. I, I hope that you had as good a time as I did. All right. Mwah, 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 mwah. Enjoy your Friday and, um, I will see you soon.